Okay, hello, it's Peter from ShadowTrader.net and Weekly Options Advisory. And in this video, I'm going to do an anatomy, so to speak, kind of like an autopsy of a losing trade that I did uh, today, which is uh, Tuesday, August 6th, 2024. So you can see up here, uh, all of the trades in Weekly Options Advisory, we're up to trade number 1613, which is the one we did. Every single trade is tracked with all entries and exits, size of what it was, series, the spread here, what the points were. If we sell something, it's a negative number, meaning that it's like sold for a credit. These are credits, which obviously result in positive dollars. If we buy something, that's a positive number, which results in negative dollars, okay? So let's just talk about this trade. This trade was a BWB for credit. And what it was, was I wanted to collect credit in a manner against the 5,300 level in the S&P because my thought process was simply that we weren't going there. And if we were going there, we would reject probably right at that level or before that level. But really where the, when the market was here, when we put on the trade kind of near the lows of the day, which obviously in hindsight was the wrong time. I mean, hence it turned into a loser, but it made a lot of sense to me. And I'm gonna break down for you in a second from entry all the way to exit and all the adjustments that were made here as to why this trade was put on, what adjustments were made, and how they were made. So hopefully uh, we can all learn a little bit from the trade. So again, I'm trying to collect credit with a BWB uh, at entry, which is this trade here. It's the two entries here. Notice the times. I made the entries at uh, 935 and 937. And you can see by the structure here, this is all on the call side and it's all moving up. So obviously these are BWBs where I'm buying two, selling four, buying two which resulted in a credit of 80 cents. And since this was two units, it's a credit of 160. And then I wanted to have four officially total in the advisory. The sizing generally goes either one, two, four, six, or eight, or some combination thereof. Eight is the maximum size that I'll do officially with subscribers. And it's usually some combination thereof. Four is probably our most common size, right? That's just a regular trade that I have decent uh, confidence in. And so it would be a four lot, which is also good because four lots is a nice number that allows you for adjustment. I always feel that the number of options contracts should not really be too small because you may be shooting yourself in the foot because you can't adjust it. Trading with just a one lot in anything, be it options or futures, tends to be difficult because you can't scale in, scale out. You can't adjust incrementally, et cetera. It's kind of just either an all in or all out situation. So in this case, we have four and you can see that both of them were entered relatively close to the open at 935 and 937 resulting in the credits received here. And notice the strikes are also not just chosen, you know, on a whim, they're specific in that notice that the long strike is 95. The short strikes are right at the 5300, which is the gap fill. The gap fill is right here at about 5302, okay? Right at that level. And then you put the other wing here, you kind of break it out to receive a credit. So obviously a normal butterfly would have a number two right here and that would be a debit. But if you do a broken wing butterfly, you put it all the way out here, you receive a credit. And then this one, we put it a little bit higher to receive a bigger credit. So that's the entry on the trade. Now, why did I enter the trade so early? Well, there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that Generally, I have found in my experience that credits that are far outside of the money in the market, they tend to only be active for short times, like relatively early, like um, in the morning. Uh, the market was opening on a, um, a gap up higher uh, today. And so what I also wanted to do was capture some of the, uh, the credits that were kind of pumping into the out of the money options at the open. You can see that this is uh, Monday, which is um, 8.05, and this is 8.06, so obviously we gapped up. And my initial thought process was that this gap would be sold, and for about a hot minute, I was right. And let me show you exactly on the entry. We'll switch this over to the ES, and we'll put it on a five minute. And here you can see, I've already annotated it, with a line here showing this congestion. Now this congestion was happening overnight into the open. And my thought process was that this congestion, because the market came down and wasn't going anywhere, I thought that this congestion was going to resolve to 
the downside. And for about five minutes or so until this double bottom, I was right. So you can see that my entry happened right in here just before we fell. And again, it looked very good for five minutes and then it didn't. Then we returned quickly and we went right up here. In hindsight, I would say that even though I had no idea we would rally so high, it may have made sense to cancel this trade right then and there because this is a strong signal, especially off of a double bottom, that the market is no longer going lower. And because the market is overly short, it does have the potential to cover shorts. But again, I did not really foresee that. I didn't think that was going to happen. So I held on to the trade, not thinking that we would go quite so high. Okay, so that's the entry. So now the market starts to move and we switch back to our S&P chart. And you'll notice here in the S&P chart on the five minute that I've purposely drawn these lines exactly where the adjustments occur here. So all of these lines tie right in with all of the adjustments on the trade here. Okay. So knowing that I've got a BWB on and I've got all this risk here, right? I've got, I've got risk up here. This risk here is 10 points, correct? Because this is plus five to the good and this is minus 15 to the bad, so to speak. So I've got 10 points risk here and I've got 15 points risk here. I've got to do something as I start to see about three hours later at 1215 that this market is really off to the races and we may be going to that short strike. So notice that the first adjustment was made right here at 1215. And what it was, was it was a butterfly here on sort of a butterfly overlay, which I paid $2.50 per contract for, which obviously is a thousand because it is a four lot. Now, why did I overlay this butterfly here? Well, first of all, why did I do it at this point? Well, it's simple because this was the high of the day at 1035 at the first reversal period. And then after that, we retraced 100% of the down move and went right to there. So right in here, the odds increase greatly that we will move higher. So the first adjustment has to be there. And at that time, the market is still at around 52.80, 75 to 80 or so. So I'm quite a ways away still, but there's four hours to go in the market. So something has to be done. I am a huge, even though, I should say, even though some of you may be looking at this trade in hindsight and seeing where we closed, you may be thinking, oh, well, none of this was necessary. But remember, when the market is moving hard to the upside, and it was moving very hard to the upside all day, right? We had extreme positive breath. We had all 11 sectors in the S&P, dark green. Uh, advanced decline lines were firm, very few negative ticks, weighted AD very strong, moving up to about a read of almost 900 at 2 p.m. There's no way of knowing if, if and when or where this is going to stop other than that 5300 level, which we'll get to in a second. So an adjustment had to be made. So the first adjustment was simply to overlay this butterfly here. And the whole point of that was, as you can see, that it turns this short and neutralizes this short into um, a vertical, right? It basically takes this short away. So now the position here is these four long, correct? And these four short, which leaves you, leaves me with a nice four, uh, four contract, 5295, 5300 call vertical uh, uh, against, or I should say in front of whatever shorts I have up here, right? Because this obviously, if this is plus two and this is minus eight, this now becomes minus six and this is four up here, right? So that basically puts a long vertical in front of my shorts with the thought process that we're not going anywhere up here and I'll be a little bit okay. And later on, if I want, I can sell these call verticals and get some of this debit back. Okay, so that's adjustment number one, which is around 1215. Now we move to 1252, which is this line here. Well, the market here does not come down at all, as I kind of expected it wouldn't, and instead starts to rally again. We start to push higher. And you can see that the high of this bar is now 52.93. And again, as I was saying, the internals are very bullish and there is still a lot of time left in the market. As you know, in the options market, at this point, there are three hours and 10 minutes left in the day. That is an eternity in DTE zero S&P options when the VIX is over 30 as it was, right? I mean, it was pretty high. The VIX closed at 27 and it had quite a range today. It was, it was still pretty high probably during that time, even though it was coming down. So in that sense, you have to do something. So here, the next adjustment is simply to buy 
a call vertical of two contracts and two contracts. Why? Because I want to move all of the risk a bit higher once again. You can notice that you can just kind of do the simple math in your head is that I'm originally long two here at 53.15. Now I, I sell eight, so I'm minus six. If I plus two right to that, I'm only minus four right at the 53.15. And where does that leave me? Minus four plus four here. So now I've got a $5 wide, essentially this is like called, an, uh, it's a form of Condor essentially, uh, where I'm now long uh, four units here of the um, long vertical at the bottom and I'm short four units here. The only problem is that notice that these are five wide and these are from 15 to 25, these are 10 wide. So I still have upside risk, but I'm in better shape now because I've got the long vertical in front of the short verticals, but again, I am incurring more debit. This time I had to spend 150 in order to make that move higher, okay? Let's move on to the next one. Now it is 208 and we are right here, okay? This is 208 p.m. Now, why do I at that point sell half of the long verticals right here? I sell two out of the four for $1.90. Remember, this was my plan all along, is to harvest the longs and leave the shorts alone and let them expire because I need uh, to get this debit back. I'm already in a debit situation. So I sell half. Now, why do I sell half there? Well, very simply because this move was quite aggressive, this liquidation break, and it took us down to the VWAP and my thought process was okay if we retrace all the way here to the VWAP and I'm noticing that in the next candle we didn't bounce at all right usually the moves to the VWAP are viable where it's down and then up like that I'm thinking okay that could be it that could be the end of the rally and I need to start harvesting so I harvest two of them but right in here when the market doesn't fall it actually moves down, it actually just goes sideways. This is a piece of market generating information here that kind of screws me up a little bit because here's the two, here's the 305, um, excuse me, the 229 right here, right? Here's the 229, right? Okay, so I apologize, I'm not looking at this. I gotta go back, I'm not looking at that. I'm talking about this one here. Okay, now this brings us to 208, which is the next adjustment, which is here where I actually start to harvest some of the long verticals. You notice that I have four long verticals and I sell two of them, which was my plan all along to start getting rid of them. And why do I do that? I do that very, very specifically because notice that in this particular bar, we came down to the 21 EMA and we rallied a little bit here. And then we came down to the 21 EMA again. So my thought process is that if this was tested twice, and it was actually really tested three times, if you count this one at the eight, it's kind of the same level, we might go lower here. So this is my last chance where I need to start harvesting the longs. So I do. I sell half of the longs, bring in $380 right here on this movement to the 21 with the thought process that if we start to dribble lower, I'll sell the other one. Well, instead, that turns to be a out to be a complete fake out. We, we hold the 21, even though we tested it twice, and we rally hard higher. So when we rally hard higher, I'm forced to make the adjustment here at 2.29 p.m., which is to buy half of the short verticals on the top side. Remember, before this, I had sold half my longs here, leaving myself with the four shorts up here. So here, I knock out two of them, but unfortunately in the rally, that's quite expensive. And this is where most of the loss of the trade actually happened because the total loss of the trade here, you can see is only 760, but 510 of that was this adjustment. Again, in hindsight, it didn't have to be done. But remember, all of this is done in service of staving off Armageddon. I cannot let the market rip way over 53.10 and be short 
four units 10 wide and be long, you know, four units only five wide. That's not going to work. Trying to close that condor that way would result in a big debit. So again, in hindsight, yes, of course, I wish I hadn't done that one, but it made sense at the time as the market did not fall from here and started not only rallying aggressively above the high, but right here pushing quite high. And look at what the level was right here. Let me just clear this. Look at what the, the level was of price right in here when I did it. The high was 5308. And this is noteworthy because this is already five points above the gap fill on the S&P. When I showed you that daily chart in the beginning, the full gap fill on the S&P was to about 5303, I believe, or 5302, and it started to go much higher. So I was thinking at the time, okay, there is not any rejection here at the gap as there should be, and we're going to float or grind higher up into the gap. Remember, when a gap fills fully, it, you have to watch closely for how it's acting. And if the gap is not, uh, not backing off, and notice that here it didn't back off at all, I'm thinking that we could just keep climbing higher, right? Look what happened. We went up right in here, filled the gap right at the 5300 as we broke out, uh, as we broke out on this bar right here correct? And just floated higher. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got to make this adjustment here, which was costly, unfortunately. Then there's the liquidation break. And as we move down on the liquidation break, remember, I still have two units long of the long vertical. Where do I sell one of them? I sell one of them right here as we come down to the VWAP, which is really, I'm thinking, okay, now that we've retraced all the way to the VWAP, we may move lower. At this point, this is, um, this is the 30, this is 305 p.m. right in here. And as you can see, I sell one of them. I don't sell the other one only because the market is continuing to kind of hold the VWAP here a little bit and we got this rally. And when we got this rally, I was thinking to myself, okay, I guess it's smart that I'm holding on to the other one. But as that started to fade and never really went anywhere, the value of that dollar fifty, you know, within these first couple of bars here dropped very quickly to $90. And so my thought process then was, okay, you know what? I'm just going to leave it on. Yes, I could knock down the loss by another $100, but that's not really going to change things materially. And if anything, if the market decides to do something weird into the close and rally hard from here, which of course anything can happen, remember these settle to cash. So being long, the 5295, 5300, um, call vertical, even though it's only just one unit, that could have been worth $500. So I felt like it was good risk reward to just leave that on, letting the rest of this stuff expire worthless, right? The two contracts of vertical 10 wide that were still up there and just kind of roll the dice. But as you can see, you know, nothing happened of the sort. We fell down uh, pretty hard uh, into the close. And this was obviously the total of all the adjustments you can see here. It all adds up. Um, to here, which was the 760. You can see if I just go like this and I sum all this, I will come to the same amount, which is the 760. All right. And so that's that. That's basically how the trade worked out. So in hindsight, what are some of the things that we can p potentially learn from this together? Um, firstly, is that when when your credits are put on early and i've done this before believe me you know i i don't i don't ever play the hope card those of you who are subscribed to me know that i cut trades very very quickly in this case i did not think the market would rally so far and i also thought that our short strikes were were good so if anything in hindsight you could look at it and say okay maybe it would have made sense to just cut the trade right there take a much smaller loss, move on, and put something on uh, the long side. But again, I thought that my, um, you know, my location was good up there, et cetera. The second thing is, is that these adjustments here, I will reiterate, as we got closer and closer, I feel that they all made sense because again, the uh, market was moving so hot and heavy and it, it was basically a question of WWSHD, which as we know stands for when what should happen doesn't. And to me, up in this area, there was just no backing off as I thought there should have been as that S&P was hitting that resistance of the gap fill. So basically that's what happened. So sometimes, you know, you'll have a losing trade like this, but I feel like it's really 
uh, valuable if we can break it down. And hopefully this gives you some insight into my adjustment process and maybe gives you some ideas as well on how you can do some of these more esoteric adjustments for yourself, right? This particular exercise that I like to do, I've put it here for you in, um, uh, in Excel. But this particular thing that I'm doing here, I do this on paper all the time. Whenever I've got a complex spread on, like if I start with a BWB or I start with a butterfly or I'm starting with an unbalanced and then I wanna do my adjustments, I'm basically writing all of this down um, on paper. Uh, at, during the course of the day, I will have this you know, jotted down on paper all the time and I'm just constantly referring to it and I'm doing these little plus ones, minus ones, etc. cetera, um, you know, plus twos, minus twos, whatever. Obviously my own personal size in my account is much larger than this, but you know, I'm doing this basically all the time with pen and paper. And I always tell new options traders to do this or even, you know, seasoned options traders such as myself. The math itself is first grade math. There's nothing really special about it. Just adding up ones and twos and fours and sixes and eights and whatever, but mapping it out this way for me, I feel really helps. And usually what I'm doing as I do it is I'll keep like a running total next to it. You don't see a running total next to it, but for instance, you know, as I start this trade, this is 242, this is 242. So right here, for instance, I would write, you know, 484 right here and I would have my strike. So I know, okay, and then I'll keep it, keep track of, okay, what's my net debit? You know, like this is not showing the net, it's just showing what the debit is at each particular trade. But, you know, I'll keep a running net debit as well on the paper so that I know, okay, this is my position. My cost is now say $1.83 per contract. This is how much it is cost in, in dollars. Okay, what do, what do I A, need to do to get that back? What do I need to do to mitigate risk? What do I potentially have to do to flip the trade so that it's more bullish, which is essentially what these adjustments did. Remember, I didn't think we would run so far, but this first butterfly that was put on basically turned you know, this butterfly into a long call vertical right here, right? That was the point. So I'm adjusting in the sense of making something that I can actually make money from instead of just sitting there scared all day, quote unquote, hoping it doesn't go there, right? So in order to effectuate that, sometimes that requires some esoteric adjustments that will require some overlay of spreads on top of different spreads. But in general, that's a good way to think, right? It's a, I think it's very, very valuable to try to figure out a way that you can flip your spread. It's usually gonna cost you money, but flip your spread from say, uh, bearish to bullish so that once the market starts moving towards your prices, you may actually be making money uh, instead of losing money. All right. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was of help to you. If you have any questions at all on anything that I'm discussing here, you can reach me at asktheshadow at shadowtrader.net. Don't forget, you can always trade live with me every single day uh, in the weekly uh, options room where I do trades like this uh, in real time. And you can take a $7 one week trial at shadowtrader.net. So hope to see you there and uh, I wish you good trading and good night. Hey, this is Peter from shadowtrader.net and I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you'd like to trade live with me every day in my weekly options advisory, then check out the link in the description below. I wish you good trading and I'll see you in the room.